So, uh, okay. Um, we're not go we're gonna bypass the approval of the agenda and the minutes until we get uh, quorum. And also the uh, committees for action. Uh, and the chairperson's report, well, we won't have that. Um, we're gonna get, go a little out of order until we, uh, uh, until, um, you know, we get quorum and then we can uh, start with the order of the agenda. Uh, is that okay? Uh, I guess it's all right to do that. Mr. Quint, am I violating anything by doing that? <laughs> Not at all. Okay. All right, um, so why don't we start off with, uh, oh, first of all, do we have any, do we have any elected officials here? I don't think so. Okay, all right. Um, why don't we start off with committees to report and uh, economic development and employment committee, Mr. Flanoy? Oh, yes, I'm here. Okay, I can get started. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there's someone else talking over me. Is there some? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Flanoy. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Okay, uh, I'm Bill Flanoy. I'm the Chair of the Economic Development and Employment Committee. Uh, my co-chair is Denise Peterson. I do not know if she's here yet, but she is my co-chair. Uh, so let's get started here. Uh, we had a meeting. Okay, hold on one second. Let's pull this up. Uh, Tuesday, October 5th, uh, the Economic Development and Employment Committee, uh, we met. Uh, at that meeting, we had the New York uh, City Business Quick Start Program. Uh, and that's uh, at nyc.gov backslash business. Uh, you can actually view that on YouTube now. Uh, Lisa Ennis of the Small Business Advocates, she actually gave a presentation. Uh, one of the things that we were looking for when we did the uh, uh, district needs uh, was we were looking at the fact that so many businesses have a lot of red tape that they have to go through uh, to actually either reopen or open their businesses. And as it turned out, uh, the Small Business Administration, Small Business Services, actually uh, saw that it was a, a need for that also. So they started up uh, earlier this year, the New York Business Quick Start Program. Uh, that Quick Start Program actually offers one-on-one -on -one services to cut red tape, uh, to open and reopen businesses, they deal with the fire department, the Department of Buildings, the consumer and uh, worker protection, environmental protection, health and mental hygiene, sanitation, agricultural and marketing, uh, financial services, uh, and also the liquor authority. And they also deal with the Con Edison. Uh, in doing so, when it's small businesses, uh, small, uh, basically storefront businesses are looking to reopen, there's a lot of things that they have to go through before they can actually open up, which is all these departments, uh, depending on who they are and which departments actually regulate them. Uh, so this is something that was actually very good. It actually cuts, reduces the time, okay, for them to process everything by 50%, by half. And also uh, any outreach that's given out to them to the uh, Quick Start program, uh, they guarantee a 48 hour response time. Now the small, so the store fronts that, the, sorry, the store fronts that work with them are the ones, majority of them are the food services, the retail, uh, and the personal care. Those are the individuals who tend to, to qualify to work with them on a regular basis. Uh, they do compliance consulting. Uh, they will come to your, your, uh, your business and basically evaluate uh, where you may have violations. They will not ticket you or serve you a violation. They will tell you where the violations are so you can actually avoid those violations where you actually do have a uh, individual come over to actually do an inspection. Uh, so far, they've hope, helped open up over 6,000 establishments, and uh, they actually helped create over 50,000 jobs since they've been in existence. Uh, they helped over 8,000 businesses, and they avoided basically over $120 million in fines that were potential had they not been there. Uh, and right now, they've also helped about 390 uh, restaurants uh, with the new uh, rules for open restaurants and other city regulations. Uh, and pretty much that's my uh, report. Uh, I will say this, uh, because of election day, November 2nd, okay, the next EDC uh, Economic Development Employment Com Committee meeting will not be held until November 9th. And that's my report. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Flanoy. Any questions for Mr. Flanoy? 
Okay. Yes, uh, yes, Mr. Jordan, John do. Bill, yes. do you have any involvement with the small business program for the sidewalk and street cafes as it's relating to small businesses? Well, if they're dealing with the open, the small, as far as, are you asking me or are you asking this? I'm asking your committee. Oh, my committee. Uh, as far as the committee is concerned, we did actually do some input into that and we will continue doing some input in that. That's something that we're looking into also. Because there are a whole host of issues that have arisen as a result of that plan. And, uh, you know, a couple of them is other businesses want to know how they can get the same treatment from the city to be able to put their goods on the sidewalk. If that's what restaurants are allowed to do, why does it not apply to all businesses? That's something that we have to, to deal with. I, how do you answer that? Mr. Dude, thank you very much for that question because we weren't looking at that, we are looking at the regulations. But that may be something you want to take a look at also. Thank you for uh, bringing that to my that's attention. That's why I that to my now. attention. Thank you. Okay, Bill, thank you. Bill, am I correct? Yes, yes sir. Didn't we discuss something about the outdoor restaurant is under the purview of the DOT? Uh, we did discuss that, but that does not mean we cannot also have input into this. No, but I meant that, that that's who we have to deal with when we're dealing with the street of restaurants, not the not the brick and mortar, correct? That's correct. Yeah, Thank my you. understanding basically, uh, it's not, it's actually something that probably uh, be the purview of transportation to be quite honest with you. That's why I brought it up. I think that's probably one of the issues we talked about. Okay. Thank you so much, Mr. Scala. Thank you, Mr. Flanoy. And uh, we do have quorum now, folks, so we can go back to, our, uh, to the beginning of the agenda. Uh, we did the welcome and everything, the approval of the agenda. So I think everybody has a copy of the agenda. Uh, is there a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Okay, uh, Mr. Was that Mr. Cohen? Seconded. Yes. Seconded by Mr. Meyer. Uh, or anyone opposed? Uh, Mr. Mr. Jordan, I just had a quick comment. Yes. Um, my liquor licenses are listed uh, with uh, two that need to be switched. Uh, 327 Atlantic is listed as full on premise. It should be new tavern wine. 82 Washington is listed as new tavern wine. It should be full on premise. With those two being switched, I'm good with the agenda. Okay. All right. But yes, but the, I guess the agenda when I'm, when I'm referring to is the order in which we're handling this business and we can actually change that, you know, when we get to your report, Mr. Smith. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So is anybody opposed to the agenda as, as listed? Okay. Um, approval of the minutes. Does everybody have a chance to approve, to look at the minutes from September, 2021? Are there any corrections, deletions, or uh, corrections, or, uh, deletions, or additions? So moved, approval. John Do. Okay. Is there a second? Second. second. So who is that? Uh, Mr. Cohen. Cohen. Mr. Cohen. Okay. Uh, are there any um, uh, anyone opposed to that? Okay. All right. That that passes. All right, now we go on to committees for action, uh, health environment and social services committee. Uh, and then the Mr. Smith, and then please, Mr. Smith, could you repeat that, uh, those corrections to the, um, you know, to the, um, the uh, liquor license uh, establishments? Sure. So he can, you can just go through them if you want, Brandon. You have them? Oh, thanks, uh, Jessica. Jessica. Okay. okay. On top of things. Um, I'm Brandon Smith. I'm the chair of the health environment and social services committee. Our vice chair position remains open. Uh, Jessica Thurston is our secretary and uh, my second in command. Very happy to have her involved. Um, the, uh, uh, the last meeting we had, um, I'm gonna give a full report on it, the executive committee, I, I, I guess. Uh, we had a great presentation though from National Grid and, and Con Ed on climate change and cybersecurity. So mm -hmm. 
these are very important subjects. I, I, I can't do justice to them right now, uh, but I would encourage you to watch the video and, and we're gonna have further follow-up at the committee. There were four liquor licenses new that we approved at the uh, last meeting. And there were also four renewals that are on this agenda here too. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's fair to state for the board's awareness that all four new liquor licenses were approved unanimously and there were no significant issues or complaints raised by members of the community uh, for those four licenses. There, there is, there's been some discussion about one of the renewals, 275 Park, uh, Park Avenue Health Club, and our committee was unable to reach a recommendation about that. So I'm gonna deal with that separately, and I would suggest that we have a separate vote on that. There were no issues with the remaining renewals. Um, just to go in a little bit of detail with respect to the new liquor licenses, the first item was 46 Nevin Street, even hotel. There's a hotel that's on the corner of uh, Nevin Street and uh, I believe it's Livingston or, or Bond, or Livingston uh, or uh, Skimmerhorn. Um, the, uh, it's a transfer of a beer and wine license. And uh, we basically had a conversation with the uh, uh, proprietors to ensure they were aware of the concerns the community has seen with hotels in the past. Um, there, there is no representation that there's going to be, or really concern that there's going to be any sort of similar issues at this hotel, 12 p.m. to 12 a.m. They do have an outdoor courtyard area, but it's not adjacent to any residences. Uh, upon our discussion, uh, there were no concerns about the hours or about the presentation. The committee approved this 1100. Um, second location, 86 South Portland Avenue. This is uh, between Lafayette and Fulton on South Portland. I think the important thing to consider here is this is a very small restaurant. It's only 20 seats, only one dinner sitting. Um, it's gonna be from 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. There's no outdoor space associated with it. a Californian French style of cuisine um, where they wanna have uh, food and, and, and cocktails. Uh, it used to be called Pequena, um, and, uh, which apparently is very popular in, in the area. There are no residences above, but there are some residences adjacent. Uh, they're very uh, consistent about uh, wanting to be uh, part of the community and, uh, they uh, are, are going to uh, take steps to ensure in accessibility. Our committee had no concerns with this application. We approved it by a vote of 11-0-0. The third application we heard, uh, they had filled out their paperwork a bit wrong. So while it's listed as full on premise, it's really a beer and wine. It's called Absolute Coffee and would be located at 327 Atlantic Avenue. They have hours of 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. daily as well as they have an outdoor street shed that's gonna be uh, operating from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, it's pretty much a coffee shop where they wanna also have beer and wine and a little food. They've been open for eight years at this location and uh, just wanted to add uh, some beer and wine to their, to their service. Um, there were uh, no concerns expressed about this location. We voted to approve it 11-0-0. Finally, there was a... Uh, application for a location called Lil M LLC, uh, which is going to be uh, at 82 Washington Avenue uh, on the corner, around the corner of Park Avenue and Washington Avenue. Uh, this was, this place is going to be open from uh, 5 p.m. until it was originally 1 a.m., but we, we noticed that they were gonna stop their food service at 10 p.m. And there was a little concern at the committee about, well, are, what, what are we gonna be doing at the restaurant from 10 p.m. until 1 a.m.? And because some other places on the block closed at, at 12 a.m., the applicant was very willing to agree to close seven days a week. It was actually her suggestion to move the hours forward to seven days a week at 12 a.m. Uh, close, but they do want to do full liquor at this at this location. So um, there was no one from the community who expressed concerns about this. There's no live music that's going to that's going to be at this location, and there's no outdoor space. Upon hearing this, and with the consideration they were going to close a bit earlier, 
the committee voted to approve them by a margin of 11-0-0. Now, in addition to this, we had four renewals up for discussion, uh, 531 Myrtle Avenue, Dunwang, Miss Noodle, 376 Classen Avenue, Speedy Romeo, 19 Old Fulton Street, Juliana's. For those three, there were no concerns expressed by any members of the community and our committee voted to approve them 11-0-0. I wanna take special note to talk about 275 Park Avenue, Park Avenue Health Club, because on this location, our committee failed to reach a recommendation and a new motion would have to be raised at this meeting to decide whether to approve or uh, deny or, or add conditions to one of the motions for this application. Park Avenue Health Club previously came before our committee in January of 2021 for a transfer application. The existing applicant who is, you can see on the state liquor website is an individual named Mira Golden um, wanted to transfer to two new individuals who came before our committee in January. Those two individuals were Wipawadi Arminio and Terrence Spriggs. Uh, Wipawadi and Terrence had been managers at the location for quite some time. Um, and uh, or actually uh, Wipawadi had just started as a manager in October, 2019 and, and Terrence had been there for about seven years. There were a number of concerns expressed by residents at the January meeting, which led our committee to vote against the transfer of this liquor license. Um, and the, uh, the vote was uh, approved by the uh, executive committee. And we sent a letter out opposing the transfer of the liquor license. The reason for the, for the issues had to do with both concerns about the credibility of the folks who were presenting to us at the January meeting for the transfer, but also because in November and January, there were two fires and a flood associated with the establishment. Specifically, the establishment operates as a, as we would call it a physical culture establishment or a health club. Um, and they offer, they, they also apparently offer uh, alcohol at the, at the health club. And aside from that, it, there, it, there was no dispute between the folks rep who were the applicants as well as the members of the community that there had been, a, a, had been multiple fires there uh, apparently caused by the dryer. And there was a concern that there were not adequate fire alarm systems within this location. Um, and I think part of the committee's consideration was that the committee wasn't satisfied with the uh, representations made by the the new folks seeking to take it over, but also that the concerns date that that existed uh, were would have been uh, were present at this location, and as a community board, we're being asked to consider uh, approving a liquor license for a place that's been associated with fires and and, and a flood. So, with with th with that in mind, we had disapproved. We had voted to uh, against the transfer of the liquor license, but. What needs to be remembered is that there still was a liquor license dating all the way back to 2005 uh, held by an individual named Mira Golden. And that liquor license popped up on our renewal sheet at the last meeting. So the liquor license is still in the name of the person who uh, held it prior to the transfer application. There's no evidence that the transfer was ever approved by the state liquor authority. Um, the, the website currently shows the license as being expired as of September 30th of 2021. And the, uh, the issue that came before our committee is, do we want to re approve, uh, renew this license? The committee um, first took a vote on whether to disapprove the license. The vote was, did not pass by a margin of 506. Five people voting in favor of disapproving it six people abstaining because, and I, I can't speak for everyone's reasoning, but I think a common consensus was there was some confusion about who was actually the, the operator on the liquor license that was before us at the community. Zero people opposed the, the motion. At the conclusion of the motion, it was requested whether there were any other motions. No one made any other motions. As a result, the committee has no recommendation for this liquor license. But 
I would suggest that that if there is a that that if there's a desire that we we have a motion and um, consider uh, uh, voting on on the on the renewal at this meeting tonight. Um, if I were to offer a recommendation, I would recommend we disapprove the application. Uh, but I'm happy to have any discussion about that, and uh, I, I would just suggest that we we treat that item separately from the other applications. Yeah, that, I agree. I agree. Now, one one second. So let's let's see. Let's go back to the uh, full uh, on premise and the wine and beer uh, licenses. Uh, are there any questions on those 46 Nevin Street, 86 South Portland Avenue, 327 Atlantic Avenue, and 82 Washington Avenue? Any questions from the uh, committee? From the board, rather. Motion to approve, John Dew. Okay. Is the, there's, the committee's recommendations. Is there second a second? For Flanoy. Okay, second for Mr. Flanoy. Uh, uh, well, I'm not going to say all in favor. Are there any opposed or any abstentions? Okay, so if I'm... you are opposed or abstaining, if you could please raise your hand or say something audibly so I see your little square pop up. Thank you. What are you asking if you're opposed to what? This is for the full liquor licenses and the wine and beer license, 46 Nevin Street. 86 South Portland Avenue, 327 Atlantic Avenue, and 82 Washington Avenue. That was the first part of Mr. Smith's report. Okay, are they no no abstentions and no no one votes against it? I'm sorry, Miss. Keone Siddiqui, I am abstaining because I don't know enough about them. I'm I have some. D admittedly this is my first meeting okay but I this is just for board members are you a new board member I might not have you on my list no she is not a new board member oh okay, okay. Oh. all right okay. Okay. Thank you. sorry for the confusion members. yeah it's this is just for board members so uh are there uh I ask again are there any uh abstentions or uh anybody voting against this uh granting the licenses Okay, hearing none, I uh, consider it to be unanimous. Uh, so we can move on to the next three, which are the renewals, beside, not 275 Park. We're gonna talk about that separately, Mr. Smith. So this is for 531 Myrtle Avenue, uh, 376 Clawson Avenue and 19 Old Fulton Street, which are renewals. Move to uh, approve the committee's recommendation. All right, Mr. Meyer, is there a second? Uh, Mr. Scala. Second. Okay. All right. Mr. Scala. Um, are there any anyone opposed to those three? Those three for renewals and any abstentions? If you do, please just uh, uh, yell out if you're opposed or if you abstain. Okay. John Do abstains to the Myrtle Avenue. Okay. Mr. Dew is- well, You're abstaining on all three, Mr. Dew, but I'll still note you as an abstention. Yeah, it's all John three of them. Standing only on Myrtle Avenue. Well, the, the the motion, voted for all three. The motion is, is uh, considering all three. So- Well, I- okay. No. We'll consider you, you want to abstain, Mr. Dew? I think I have to abstain. You know, I'm okay. chair, of the, right. no I'm problem. chair of the Myrtle Avenue Business Improvement District. I'm just trying to follow protocol. I'm certainly in favor of it, but I need to take into consideration what might be considered a conflict. Okay. That's the only reason I'm abstaining. I'm All in right. favor no. of it, actually. No. All right. No problem. Are there any other, uh, any other abstentions or anybody else opposed? Okay. Hearing none. Uh, that that passes. So now we're down to just the one item, the 275 Park Avenue. Motion to now, they, a motion to disapprove the re, the uh, renewal. Okay, that's uh, Mr. Meyer. Is there a second? Uh, Mr. Second. Quint. All right. And now it, uh, there's is uh, there may be questions or discussions. So Mr. Smith is available. For any questions or discussion? Mr. Jordan, a question. 
All right. Bill Dave, Fiddle. Go ahead, Mr. Flair. Uh, Mr. Smith, what was the initial uh, recommendation, uh, the moat that was actually being presented? What was the application, the initial application? Was it for renewal or for was it for transition of license? Or is your question about the January meeting or about the meeting last week? Meeting last week. The meeting last week, it appeared on our calendar as a renewal. So the renewal is what we're voting on right now. Correct. It's a renewal yeah. of the of of the of the original application. Um, January was the transfer presentation, and it do, doesn't appear the transfer uh, went through uh, from what. I, I, I can see from public records and from speaking with the board of office. So what we're looking at right now is the committee didn't vote to approve renewal. Correct. Okay. Okay, uh, Ms. Morales is next. Yes, um, I'm a little confused. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. So I understand the concerns because of the fires that they've had there and the flooding. Um, but then the other reason of why it was denied was, and I don't know if I heard correctly, so forgive me, because of the presentation of the two, two persons that were, it would be transferred to, or because it was a transfer instead of a renewal. That's where I need clarity. Sure, I'm, I'm happy to clarify that for you, Ms. Morales, and, and sorry, I, I could probably explain this clearer. I, I wanna be as concise as I can though. The, uh, the, the disapproval from January was based on a number of factors. There were the fires, there was the flood, there was the lack of a fire arms, uh, alarm system. The applicants were presenting to us at the committee meeting that there were, at, that the new, the new the parties who were, it was being transferred to were telling us, remember their managers at this location, they were telling us that they were not serving alcohol at the location, but the residents were telling us that they were serving alcohol and the, uh, there was alcohol advertised on their website, which we found at the committee meeting. So it led, led us to have some concerns about their credibility in addition to the concerns about the fires and the flood. The residents had also complained about parties going to 4 and 5 a.m. with loud music at, from coming out of the health club. So that was factored into the discussion as well, too. But based upon, the, all, of, based upon all of these concerns, which involved both concerns about the people in front of us in January, as well as the circumstances that had been in place when the applicant who's still on the renewal license here tonight uh, was, was, was on that license, um, we took all that into consideration in January and voted to disapprove. And then last week, we were unable to reach a recommendation because we had five people in favor of disapproving and six people who abstained. I hope that clarifies everything for you. Yes, thank you. Okay, are there any other questions for Mr. Smith? Um, please use the uh, reactions area, uh, reactions button and then raise hand. Okay, no other questions? I, I don't have any questions, but I would just like to add that um, this committee and Mr. Smith in particular does an extremely thorough job in representing the community. And when he makes a recommendation, he has done the homework and uh, I would always support his recommendation, especially if I was not in the committee. I have to rely on the very intense study that Mr. Smith does when he is doing this work. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Okay. Thank you, John. Thank you, Mr. Du. All right. So, uh, if hearing no more questions or concerns, uh, the motion is on the floor uh, to disapprove uh, this uh, full uh, renewal for the full on premise license. Uh, are there any, uh, is there anybody opposed to that? We're going, the motion is to disapprove the uh, full on-premise license for 275 Park Avenue. Is anybody opposed? 
And are there any abstentions? Please raise your hand, your electronic hand. First of all, let's let's see if there's anybody opposed. Is anybody opposed? Mr. Cohen, you're opposed? Mr. Cohen, uh, you, you're, you're muted, Mr. Cohen. You have to unmute yourself. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Abstain. Okay. It's one abstention. Anybody else that's, well, who else is, uh, anybody opposed at all? All right, there's no opposition. Uh, are there any other abstentions? Please raise your electronic hand. So I don't think I can see everybody only on one screen here. Okay, all right. One abstention. So the motion carries to disapprove uh, the license for 275 Park Avenue. Uh, is that it, Mr. Smith? That's it, thanks. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Jordan, may I ask Mr. Smith a question outside of what we just discussed? Yes, go ahead. Uh, Mr. Smith, I'm just kind of curious, based on what's been going on with COVID, have you seen a, uh, you mentioned that this uh, particular liquor license that we just discussed had, uh, had already expired. It had basically gone beyond your date of renewal. How many other um, uh, basically rest of liquor licenses have also expired before being renewed? You have an idea? Is that ongoing? I, I couldn't reliably answer your question. I'm sorry, Mr. Flanoy. I, I don't. I, I don't have a good understanding of 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 which liquor licenses uh, that we see have have expired. When I when I, I when I when we get a, a, a license up for renewal at our committee, we understand that it's our responsibility to act on it. Uh, but I had to look into this one to understand who was the operator, which is how I came across this uh, un, this information that this one was expired. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, Mr. Singletary has joined us and uh, I'm going, Mr. Singletary, we're up to number five on the agenda, which is uh, you, by the way. And um, we uh, also have done one committee to report, Mr. Flanoy did his report on the Economic Development and Employment Committee. Uh, so um, I'll just turn the meeting over to you. Thank you, Lenny, I appreciate that. Um, for those who, may not know who I am, I'm Lenny Singletary, I serve as the chair of Community Board 2. And it's always good to have an able first and second vice chair. So Lenny, thank you for taking the reins over tonight. I appreciate it. I heard the very uh, interesting discussion and it was, it was good to hear that things were moving along. Bill, to your question, I would suggest that you send that information to the board office. The board office might be able to give you better detail about liquor licenses that have expired. I don't know this to be a fact, but it's probably a, a fair number. Um, of like yeah. licenses that have expired. So you to get greater detail, I would recommend you call on the board office. In line with the agenda, um, chairperson's report, I have a brief chairperson's report. I don't have, have much to mention. What I would remind everyone is that we're at a point now where we're coming into the normal business of the community board. And as part, it's time for um, elections. You should be aware that I've asked Carol Ann to reach out to um, a number of you to serve on the nominating committee. I would ask and encourage all of you to say yes. It is my intention that everyone on the board play a part in some committee. Others have standing roles and then others who I think have capacity to do a little bit more. And then also wanna make sure that the experience of being on the nominating committee is a shared experience. So if you are contacted, uh, I encourage you to please say yes. And that way you can have more experience on what that process is like. Um, additionally, you know, just, just bears repeating that there are several opportunities where the city agencies are reaching out to the community for hearings and feedback. I encourage everyone, if you have the opportunity to do so, please engage, please have your voices heard. And in some cases, it may not be required that you say something but it is always encouraged that you gather the information. That information is key and it helps um, us make decisions that in many cases would come before us as a community board, but just as a citizen of the city of New York, that information is key for how it may directly or uh, tangentially impact you. So I encourage everyone to participate. Um, with that, I'm, that concludes my chairperson's report this evening. 
Like I said, it would be brief. And with that, we'll move to item number six, the district office report, Carol Ann. Hi, hey, good evening, everyone. Mm, my voice is a little rusty. <laughs> um, welcome to Wednesday, second Wednesday of the month. Um, so up, up, up for us, uh, Tia and I have been holding down the fort, as you know, and we continue to do that. Um, the listing of uh, complaints, constituent inquiries is um, up on the drive. Um, just to let you know, the range of things that we got in the last month, had someone call in from NYCHA that their apartment was flooded and they hadn't had a response after a week. Um, and, you know, try, try to get some NYCHA assistance with that. Um, also, we're getting a lot of complaints about trash not being picked up, as well as trucks off route. So those are a couple of things that um, I work with my colleagues and the other agencies to resolve. Um, just want to say uh, district needs statement. We're working on that. A survey will be going out next week. We ask you to please, please, please take the time and respond. Uh, we're a little behind the curveball. Uh, the transportation and land use committees have had extremely full agendas and um, made it a little difficult to squeeze it in because after three hours, you know, um, the, the, that, that item sort of got um, pushed aside, but now we're down to crunch time. So please, everyone, when you get that email, I urge you to respond as soon as possible. And talking about the district needs statement, so they, um, our consultations have ended. There's a lot of information that, um, sorry about that. There's a lot of information that we gathered from those um, consultations and it's all in the drive. Uh, Taya loaded it up. Please, I, I suggest um, that you take a look at it. There's stuff that you'll find there, um, HPD, um, has a study where they're going to look at disparities um, amongst New Yorkers and how they're recovering from COVID. Um, it, you know, they're gonna include racial disparities. This is almost a new thing for the city of New York. We learned that the um, police department, the 8-8 the got most of their bathrooms um, redone. Um, we learn what the agencies are asking for. So please, if you have not yet done so, please take a look at all those items that have been uploaded. Um, and that's it. And I just wanna thank uh, the board members for always being responsive, for keeping us engaged. Um, a lot of your emails are very informative and I do appreciate them. So thank you very much. Thank you, Carolyn. Thank you to you and Tanya for your efforts to leave the office and continue to do a great job. Help is on the way. So all I'm gonna say, just hang on, help is on the way, all right? Um, any questions for Carol Ann? Okay, great. Next item is uh, acknowledgement of the elected- Yeah, I, did I had a question for Carol Ann. Oh, go ahead, John. Uh, Carol Ann, uh, the street cleanliness reports um, and the concerns about dirty streets have been associated with the open streets program where folks are not moving their cars and the cleaning trucks cannot get in to clean the streets. Has that issue been documented as a contributory factor to the uh, dirty streets? Um, at this point, I will say that is anecdotal. Um, part of what's um, creating what we see as dirtier streets is also we've reduced ASP. Um, so, so that is also a contributing factor. Thank you. Okay, great. Uh, next item on the agenda is acknowledgement of the elected officials or their designees. Do we have any elected officials that are on tonight's call? Yes, hi, Rod, can you hear me? Yeah, John, hold on, not yet. You're early, okay. just hold on. I'm glad your right. sound is working, don't go anywhere. 
Okay. Nan, John, yeah, uh, Nan Blackshear representing Borough President Eric L. Adams. Good evening, Community Board Two. Can you hear me? Yes, good evening. Good evening. Um, I just wanted to um, con um, just basically say that um, the Borough President, you can tell I wasn't ready to go first. Um, so um, the borough president has been um, has attended uh, this past Saturday and uh, a street co-naming for the late district attorney Ken Thompson. I see that uh, many um, there are a few members from community board two there, including yourself, Chair Singletary. And um, uh, the borough president uh, gave speech, and I'm sure a lot of people saw him um, in the press, uh, a posthumous proclamation about the street co-naming will be going to um, uh, DA Thompson's widow, LaShawn Thompson. Uh, actually, I had a discussion about that uh, today earlier with uh, Levin's office, Glomani, Bravo Lopez, who helped to organize the event with, um, with Wayne from the DA's office and a few others. And um, from what I've been told, the event was um, very well organized. So uh, thank you to those offices for organizing it. Uh, the Burr president also um, um, has and I'm not too sure if I reported on this, but about um, his stance in regards to cybersecurity. He has partnered or attended a, an event with CUNY who is now offering uh, courses in regards to cybersecurity. So um, he applauded them for doing that, considering the amount of hacking that's going on in the world um, and also identity theft that's happening, particularly with seniors. So, um, um, so he applauded them and attended their event when they announced it. Um, as far as Community Board 2's vacancies are concerned, our office is reviewing them. We are hoping that we can have those vacancies filled before the end of 2021. Um, but it may go to the next administration for the borough president. And, um, and I can say that it will be an exciting new administration having um, met with him um, not too long ago, as far as our office was concerned. Um, uh, the borough president is calling for new legislation uh, to go after those who are speeding in the community. He's calling for legislation changes on the state and city level, particularly when you have drivers who are flagrantly breaking the laws, the traffic laws, um, something stronger needs to take place. So um, he's been advocating with um, not only the mayor, but also with uh, state legislator, um, state senator, Andrew Gunardis. Um, I, my last comment is that I wish everyone a safe and fun, but a particularly emphasis on safe Halloween. And I look forward to seeing you in November. Thank you. Thank you, Nair. Next up, we have um, Mr. John Watkins, representing the Brooklyn District Attorney. Good evening, everyone. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Good evening. Good, good, good evening. I, I won't be long. I'm, I'm at another venue, so I hope the background noise doesn't come through. But uh, first of all, um, uh, the DA continues uh, with his team uh, servicing the public and, and crime prevention and safety. Uh, recently, he's come out with press releases just yesterday uh, regarding the uh, prosecution of uh, someone who ran over a six-year-old girl uh, just a few weeks ago. Uh, and so uh, he continues in that effort. And so it's just not uh, 
you know, guns and gangs. So oftentimes it's, it's crimes literally that occur on and in the streets with our citizens being run over by cars and other vehicles and people being hurt and injured and even killed in this sad case. Uh, on that point, on another point regarding crime and safety, uh, sex trafficking is something that currently plagues our borough and uh, the DA and his teams are prosecuting people who are uh, facilitating uh, that illegal uh, trafficking in our, in our community. Uh, and so again, back to our website, uh, there are press releases that give uh, details very specifically about uh, the circumstances regarding these crimes. As uh, Ms. Blackshire just mentioned, uh, Saturday was a glorious day. Uh, we had the street renaming of former DA Ken Thompson that was hosted by District Attorney Eric Gonzalez. Uh, it was a very uh, bright day, a great occasion uh, where there is now a, a new street sign that is directly in front of the Brooklyn DA's office on J Street. So that part of J Street is, is now named Honorable, uh, the DA Honorable Ken P. Thompson Way. Uh, so if you're ever in that area, look up and uh, see and give uh, remembrance and, and thanks to former DA Thompson for his contributions to the community. The last point that I have is our Hispanic Heritage event that will be coming up on Tuesday, October the 19th. Uh, that will be located at the Tillery Hotel at 85 Flatbush Avenue. Uh, you do need to RSVP, uh, so uh, you can go on to our website, which would be communityaffairs at brooklynda.org. That's again, communityaffairs at brooklynda.org. And you can uh, RSVP there, or you can call our office during normal business hours at 718-250-3888. That's all I have for now. Uh, safe, uh, rest of safe month. We're having great weather. And as Nan mentioned, a uh, happy and safe Halloween. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Watkins. Do we have any other representatives? All right, great. Let's move on to item number eight, our committees to report, our Finance and Personnel Committee, Mr. Jordan. Okay, thank you, Mr. Secretary. Uh, and actually, we uh, after our last meeting, I did report to the executive committee and uh, and to the full board in September. Uh, however, we ha do have a meeting scheduled for October 28th, and we should have some uh, news uh, to report uh, about our postings and also uh, for the two vacancies that we have. Uh, as well as we're going to be organizing how we're going to interview candidates uh, and things of that nature. Um, November 18th is our next regular meeting, uh, but we will be meeting on October 28th, so we'll have more to report uh, after that meeting. That's it, uh, Mr. Singletary. All right. Thank you, Mr. Jordan. Len Lanius, uh, Mr. Gordon. Thank you, Mr. Singletary. Uh... Land use will be meeting next week. Uh, we have a number of uh, Landmark Preservation Commission applications and a good number of other topics that we will have. So we are gonna have a very full meeting next week. And thank you very much. <laughs> okay, uh, Parks and Recreation, uh, Barbara Zala Gringer. Good evening, uh, Mr. Chair and the board. Uh, I'm Barbara Zala Gringer. And Andrew Lastowecki is my co-chair of the Parks meeting, uh, Committee. We are meeting again this coming Monday where we're going to have an update on capital um, projects from the, the status of capital projects from the Parks Department. Our last meeting was on September 20th where we had a presentation from Hannah Basio, who is now the Senior Outreach Coordinator for our Community Board uh, from the Partnership for Parks, which as many of you know, is a public-private partnership between the Parks Department and the City Parks Foundation. And they, build, they work together to build sustainable community groups for parks, including supporting friends groups, volunteer programs and projects, grants, and other resources. Uh, you may have noticed that during COVID, there's appeared to have been an increase in the number of dogs in the district. and um, um, that's really 
sparked an interest in establishing dog runs, additional dog runs. Um, we had presentations from two people, one a board uh, committee member and uh, other from the Fort Greene area um, looking for support and talking about the creation of dog, the possibility of creating dog runs both at University Plaza and um, the around Claremont Avenue. There's already been a dog association founded there. So I think both groups really are in the process of getting more information, gathering more support and getting people to sign up uh, to belong to friends groups. We also heard about a recommendation to change the name of Columbus Park and the statue of Columbus there to honor, honor Americo Vespucci uh, no action was taken by the committee on that recommendation. We also discussed um, parks department items for the um, fiscal year 23 statement of district needs and a, a number of committee members uh, had vol volunteered at that time to enter that information in our, into our statement. Any questions? Thank you, Barbara. <clears throat> Thank you. Next committee to report is Transportation and Public Safety, Sidney Meyer. Good evening. Chair, uh, I do have a question for Barbara. Mr. Scala. Yeah, uh, Barbara, when you have a dog run, does the committee, do, do, do we approve that? Does it come as a committee board? So hold on, let me, let me interrupt for a second, Barbara, before you respond. So well, that's a great question, but that's a question that really should be asked at committee. Thank you. Sid Meyer. Good evening. Good evening, uh, Chairperson. And uh, uh, we haven't had our committee meeting uh, yet this month. It's the committee will be meeting on the 21st. John Quint will be chairing it because I will be in the Galapagos. So uh, uh, we are concerned. We continue even during to press the uh, MTA to make more of the uh, uh, subway stations in our district handicapped accessible. We've continued to press them specifically on York Street. Uh, and, and, and I'm told that we can expect within the next per some period of time for them to issue a report on upgrading York Street. Uh, they promised that it was supposed to be done uh, uh, by, by the summer, by May or June. It hasn't been done. Uh, the MTA says that it's in the works. Our elective officials have been pressing them on that as well. I note that uh, the, the continued uh, people running red lights and, uh, uh, and, 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 and speeding in school zones is a continuing problem. Uh, and we've seen unfortunate uh, uh, deaths caused by people who have, one of them who had 90 speed light uh, speed violations, which are in school district, which are in school zones since uh, 2017, which is an incredible number. And uh, we're trying to see if we can press our government officials to come up with a better way of dealing with the people who violate these rules so that uh, the streets are made safer. And I welcome everyone to come to the meeting on, on October 21st. I am gonna try to attend it remotely but I'm not sure whether that's gonna work or not. Thank you. So thanks for your report. And going forward, no smiling when you say Galapagos. Like, we just <laughs> smiled. This kind of wasn't cool. You know, we all sit here and we love Brooklyn, but you know, the smile wasn't cool. Um, I intend to, a, I tend, I'll, I'll send pictures. Have a safe, have a safe trip. Thank you. Um, <laughs> next committee to report um, is uh, Youth Education and Cultural Affairs. Betty Fibers. Uh, good evening, uh, everyone. Uh, I'm Betty Fibers, the chair. My co chair is Dorothea uh, Thompson Manning. Uh, I believe she's here. I saw her name uh, on the participants. Uh, before I go into our meeting, I want to report that uh, the Brooklyn Public Library has a new, very exciting branch in Dumbo. I went to the opening uh, as one of the representatives of our community board, and I had the pleasure of going on a tour of the facility. It, it was like so beautiful. It was very bright, inviting, and it looked like it 
it has a very large children's section, which is like a wonderful addition to the community. And there were young people from PS 307 in the Farragut area uh, to be part of the celebration of the opening. And you could just see the delight on their faces uh, when they ran into the children's area. I urge everybody uh, to visit. Um, and in addition to the children's collection, uh, there will be a lot of uh, children and family programming. So that's very exciting. And then uh, early in the next year, we're told uh, that we'll be hearing about the Brooklyn Heights branch opening, which will be also be a, a, a wonderful uh, addition for our communities. So in our last meeting in September, because we didn't have October yet, uh, we spent a lot of time talking about the uh, statement of needs and so on. And one of the areas our uh, committee members are interested in is the cornerstone programs, which are youth programs after school and weekends, I, I believe mostly in, in the NYCHA community. And they're funded at the uh, lowest levels of these types of programs, and they have the highest needs uh, of population and, 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 and so on. And one of the things we were thinking of is rather than calling for just an increase in funds for the programming to look at a specific facility and what they need, such as a new gym floor, that that perhaps could be something that's uh, fundable. So we've been uh, researching that uh, and so on. So uh, we will be meeting the end of this month and uh, we urge everybody to join us in our concern and care for the young people in our community. Thank you, buddy. Mm -hmm. um, so before we move to the next item, which is representatives from city agencies and community partners, I do want to go back a bit. I see that we've been joined by um, Guamani Bravo Lopez, who is representing Council Member Stephen Levin. I wanted to give Guamani an opportunity to speak if he has any updates. And then I also have another announcement I want to make related to something I mentioned earlier. So Guamani, the floor is yours. Thank you, Lenny. Uh, hi, everyone. Glomani Bravo Lopez from Council Member Stephen Levin's office. Um, you know, there's a lot that I, I heard mentioned uh, here, so I'll just keep it pretty brief. Um, first and foremost, I would encourage anyone to take part in the uh, 84th Precinct Council meetings, you know, if, if and when you are uh, available to, as well as with the NCO meetings, been discussing the recent uh, incidences of, of gun violence, uh, whether it is in the downtown Brooklyn area with 84th and downtown Brooklyn partnership uh, and, and Captain Rana from the 84th, as well as um, over over towards Gowanus, uh, Gowanus houses. Um, so, you know, that's just one, one thing I wanted to start off with. Um, we were also very excited to see the uh, the ribbon cutting yesterday for the new branch of the Brooklyn Heights or the Brooklyn Public Library, um, which, as many of you on this community board are aware, came out of a ULR uh, some many years ago, back in I think it was 2015, out of the negotiations from the Brooklyn Heights branch of the Brooklyn Public Library. It's the first branch that's been opened in something like 40 years, uh, give or take, maybe off by a year there, so don't quote me on the number, but um, that is the first new branch to serve Dumbo and Vinegar Hill. Um, and in that same vein, I wanna speak on uh, the follow-up to the 69 Adams. Uh, so an MOU was released by the Economic Development Corporation uh, with points of agreement between uh, EDC and following on negotiations with the community, um, specifically on the MTA piece with York Street, which uh, which I heard addressed. So we're continuing to stay up, um, you know, continue to press pressure the MTA on that. Uh, they did receive $5.5 million out of that sale amount, which was to go towards, at least in part, towards a study. Uh, and State Senator Kavanaugh's office recently read a led a press conference on that. Um, we hope to have more, more from them soon, um, but you know, have urged the fact that more work is needed and additional egress as well as improvements to the current station configuration, uh, as well as DOT, um, which DOT was working with parks to open up one of the lots, the Washington Street Yard, otherwise known as Anchorage Plaza, right beneath the Brooklyn Bridge connecting Washington Street 
to Old Fulton Street. Uh, thank you, Taya, for that, for including those links. Um, and two other components of this were one and a half million dollars a piece for PS 307, as well as for Farragut houses. So we've been running two concurrent uh, stakeholder groups with both the members, members of Farragut houses, uh, as well as Principal Carroll at PS 307. Um, and the respective agencies, be they NYCHA, DOE, to ensure that the funds go to uh, agreed upon purposes by the community. And uh, last but not least is Skirmerhorn Street. Um, I'll flag this is an ever present issue, certainly over the past many years. And uh, the bike lane on Skirmerhorn has routinely been blocked, obstructed. Uh, and this has come up at prior meetings, um, certainly at, at prior 84th Precinct Council meetings. If you'll notice, DOT has placed signs on Skirmahorn Street for those of you who walk by or drive down the road or bike down the, uh, try to bike down that bike path. Um, they're asking for feedback. I think this is the first serious opportunity they have now that all construction has stopped on the stretch, uh, certainly between Bond and Hoyt, to be able to do some engineering work and not just push it to enforcement. So really calling them on calling on them to do this because this is a massive uh, piece of the bike infrastructure here in downtown Brooklyn. And obviously we want to make sure that it's open and accessible for bicyclists, uh, but we do need as much feedback and want to make sure that DOT is hearing from people who rely on that bike lane or uh, use Garmahorn in any way. So um, if you get a chance, please participate in that. And that is all. I'll put my contact information in the chat. And thanks for letting me speak. Thanks, Gomani. Um, I want to circle back. Earlier in my report, I mentioned that I hope that everyone would say yes if contacted by the nominated committee. And I wish I had the same luck when I played Lotto, but I, I'm happy to report that I do have um, a full response from all of the members who were contacted. And at this time, I want to announce the members who make up the nominated committee. The nominated committee this year will be chaired by Mr. Brandon Smith, co-chaired by Mr. John Quint. The members will be Ms. Suzanne Quint, no relation, Mr. Ron Cohen, Latrell Masso, Nick Ferreira, um, and Ms. Uh, Santia Pilecchia. So those will be the seven members who make up the um, nominating committee. I thank you all for saying yes. I appreciate um, you making this easy for me. And I know that the committee will do a fantastic job. I do wanna just highlight a point that we're, willing, we're work, working to get clarification on. The way our bylaws are drafted at the moment, they require an in-person vote of someone you know, casting their vote. And now that we're in a virtual environment, we're trying to get some clarity on that. Um, and we'll, we'll come back to um, the full board to let you know what the process will be. We we'll want it to be transparent and clear that as it relates to the bylaws, that's something that we have to address. And so um, if there are any questions, please feel free to contact me offline. I'm happy to answer any questions. And again, thank you to the members who will be um, serving on that committee. And I'm sure Mr. Smith and team will do a fantastic job. So with that, let's move on to Item number nine, city agencies and community partners. I'd ask that if you are representing someone, please rep announce yourself through the chat. And that way, Taylor, Taya and the team can identify you. And with that, I'm gonna start with the representatives from the Brooklyn Public Library. Excuse me, um, Mr. Chair. Greg Mayhew from Senator Kavanaugh's office is also on the line. Oh, really? Greer, come on, please speak up, young man. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, good evening, everyone. I just have a few updates from our office. Um, I know over a few, uh, was it late August, um, the state legislator went back to a special session um, where the senator, as the head of the, the chair of the housing committee, he helped to extend the commercial eviction and foreclosure moratorium um, and also the residential eviction moratorium. Um, which, was ex which was extended to January 15th of next year. Um, additionally, um, the CRAP applications, um, that is now automatically protected. So folks, if you apply to CRAP, you're automatically protected while your application is still pending. Um, tenants whose CRAP applications approved will receive uh, various protections, including a year 
of eviction protections. Um, and a few community updates. Um, one is that I know a lot of people mentioned about York Street. Um, on September 23rd, our office, along with a host of the Senator's colleagues in the state, of uh, federal and city levels, held a press conference to urge the MTA to, to, uh, to address the different safety concerns at the station, along with um, releasing their long-awaited uh, feasibility study. Um, at this point, we are still pushing um, along with uh, the Senator's colleagues to get those answers for the community. We know you're frustrated, we're frustrated as well. Um, so of course, we'll circle back with everyone if you have any other questions. Um, and also on Friday, um, we're hosting a flu shot event along with the seven member Joanne Simons office. They might've mentioned this before. It is in Cobble Hill. Um, and we are actually doing, you know, scheduling appointments. So if you know anyone who's interested or if you're interested in getting a flu shot, please reach out to our office. I'm gonna put the phone number and email address in the chat. Thanks again, everyone. Thank you, Greer. Before I move on, are there any other elected officials or representatives from elected officials that I've missed? Okay, great. Now I'll go back to the rep, our friends from the Brooklyn Public Library. Thank you, Chair Singletary. Um, and thank you all. And thank you, especially Betty, who did a wonderful report already about the opening of the Adam Street Library. Um, so for those of you that might not know me yet, um, my name is Kat and I'm the managing librarian of the Adam Street Library, which had its grand opening yesterday. So we've had two full days of service and I can tell you it's, it's everything that we had hoped to be in the community. We have people coming in and using the shared work tables, we have uh, teens coming in using computers, looking at the materials, using materials, children, children, children um, from PS307, from the Art of Words Community School. So it's been um, grand. Um, so I invite you all to uh, come by. We're open six days a week, Monday through Saturday. Uh, I know that Taya um, put the link in the chat before. There's also some great photos on there if you want to get a sense before you go down. Uh, you can't miss us anymore. We're in a live uh, building with the word library on the side, which this uh, community board um, so awesome put their stamp of approval on uh, several months ago. Um, and yeah, that's that's really it for me. I'm going to toss it over to my colleague Bailey, who also has a pretty huge announcement. Hello, everybody. I'm Bailey. I'm the manager of the Walt Whitman Library. And I'm sure many of you know this, but last week, all libraries in New York City went fine free. Yay, no more late fines. Um, so uh, what that means is that there will be no more late fines uh, if you have a book that's overdue. Um, if it is 28 days past the due date, you'll be charged for a replacement. Um, but the uh, uh, my NYC libraries students um, will not have that. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Um, stop by a lot of the libraries in the city that are participating in the Culture Path book display. Ours included. Voting starts October 25th for that. Um, our book display is Festivals of the World, and we decorated our whole mezzanine to talk about obscure festivals from all across the globe. So be sure to stop in and say hi. And uh, I think that's all from the Brooklyn Public Library. Thank you so much. Wait, only two representatives from the library tonight? We normally have five. Like, what, what am I missing? It's an early, <laughs> yeah. early joke. Oh. A, a couple of our colleagues are out today. OK, got uh, it. Just yeah. checking. Just checking. <laughs> I wanted to make sure I was on my P's and Q's. OK, great. Thank you for the report. Um, next, we have representatives from the Brooklyn Navy Yard. Thank you, Chair Singletary. Uh, you don't get off that easy with the Brooklyn Public Library. I do have one pitch. They Last week, they released uh, season four, episode two of their Borrowed podcast, which uh, is building Brooklyn. And it's about the Brooklyn Navy Yard, um, specifically about uh, women at the Brooklyn Navy Yard during World War II. Um, there were 200 at the start of World War II, and it grew to 7,000 women um, at the yard by the end. Um, and that gives me a good segue into what I wanted to talk about. First, um, our employment center is continuing uh, to connect folks with uh, jobs at the yard, including women in non-traditional roles. That's one of the things they focus on. Um, 
And if you go to the Employment Center's page, you'll see at least 24 openings right now. That's what I last counted. And just to let you know, some of them are, uh, we focus, of course, on manufacturing, but everything. Millwork, sander, project manager and fabricator, fabric cutter, technical designer, CNC machinist, junior designer, art handler, overnight baker. Um, so definitely um, you or anyone you know who's in, interested in the next employment opportunity, please connect them with the Employment Center. Um, they're doing their still twice weekly virtual information sessions, 15 minute webinar, then a one on one meeting with um, an employment specialist. Um, and another remember, uh, along with women in non-traditional roles, other things that take resumes to the top of the pile for the employment center are long-term unemployed, um, previously incarcerated. Um, so these things that in a normal setting would put you at the bottom of a pile will bring you to the top um, when we're trying to fill roles with your businesses. So please connect folks, you know, with um, the employment center and reach out to me if you have any questions on that. Um, then I wanted to talk about Open House New York weekend happening all over the city this weekend, but specifically at the Brooklyn Navy Yard, Saturday and Sunday, 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. All the tours are sold out, but from 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. at Building 77 in the, the lot behind Building 77, there'll be food trucks, there'll be music, and then there'll be some of our 500 innovators and entrepreneurs will be there um, kind of doing demonstrations. We have Noel Copeland, an artist, showing how to sculpt figurines. Um, Jackie Meyer, the artist, will be there to teach children how to uh, draw perfect pumpkins and uh, faces for those pumpkins. Um, skill set, which takes recycled objects and makes furniture, will be doing demonstrations. Uh, if there's any bikers here, Clip Bike will have demonstrations. They're a yard company that they made a device that clips onto any bike and turns it into an e-bike. Um, so you can try that out. So come on down again, Saturday and Sunday, 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. Walk right into Building 77 at Flushing and Vanderbilt and head to the back lot. Also a pitch that Naval Cemetery Landscape will be open uh, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. both Saturday and Sunday. So if you haven't checked that out over on Kent Dev, um, if you've ever been to Greenwood Cemetery for a little bit of green space and solitude and it's even closer to your house um, and it's a really beautiful space. Um, and lastly, um, if you go to our programs page, other programs are happening at the yard, including with our partner Turnstile Tours. Um, so they have walking tours again of the yard you can sign up for. And there's also, again, for those biking enthusiasts, there's bike, bike tours open. Um, on Sunday, October 24th, there are six slots left in their bike tour of the Brooklyn Navy Yard. Uh, and some of the walking tours include uh, World War II history. Other ones are about the architecture at the yard. Um, so, you know, we've been open the whole time, but we're back. We're really back open and cooking and come on down to the yard and, and check us out. And um, we'd love to see you soon. Thank you. Thanks, Ethan. Uh, next up, we have representative from the Cabinet Park Conservancy. Hi, um, it's me, Doreen. Um, I just had a couple of announcements. One on this Sunday, um, October 17th, um, between two and five, we're having a big daffodil planting. We're planting 5,000 daffodils that were donated from New Yorkers for Parks in commemoration of the 20th anniversary of 9-11. And this year to also commemorate uh, those lost to COVID-19. Um, and so visit our website at kevinpark.org um, and you can download the um, flyer or um, email us at kedmanparkdaffodils at gmail.com and I will send you a JPEG if you want to um, distribute them to your friends and family and organizations. Um, and then on October 23rd and 24th at 3 p.m. on the weekend, we're um, co-hosting Theater 20 20 is returning to Cadman uh, Park and they're uh, presenting an hour long presentation, uh, Shakespeare, uh, you know, like their take on a Midsummer's Night Dream, but it's called The Midsummer Hour. And I think it's going to be very funny. Um, and um, please bring your blankets and join us on the AstroTurf lawn. And speaking of AstroTurf lawn, um, I, spoke to Commissioner Marty Marr today. Um, he's on his way for a two week cross country vacation. So it was a great time to talk everything parks. And then all of a sudden he would be like, oh my gosh, here I'm seeing the Allegheny. So it was pretty fun. Um, but we have um, 
the uh, AstroTurf, a new AstroTurf field is fully funded. And we're hopefully going to see that within a, a year or two when it comes back from his vacation, I'll have a definite timetable on that. So a lot of things. So thank you, hope to see you in the park. Next up we have a uh, representative from Accessible Dispatch. Oh, hi, thank you, uh, Chair Singletary. My name is Stephen Williams. I represent Accessible Dispatch. It's a, it's a program that connects the community to wheelchair accessible taxis all throughout the five boroughs of New York City. And the great thing is that it's the same price as a regular taxi cab. All the drivers are trained in wheelchair securement. Um, people can access trips by calling our 24 hour um, call center. They can um, book trips on their smartphones if they download our app. They can also book trips um, online on our website. And it's available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. People can get trips on demand or they can um, schedule um, advanced trips. So it's a wonderful program. I will drop the website link in that. And I'll reach out to your um, I'll reach out to your board tomorrow and see if I can connect with you guys. If you're having any other activities where I can speak, that would be awesome. Thank you. Appreciate you. Um, participating in tonight's discussion. Thank you, Chair. Uh, next up, we have our representative from the Red Cross. Hi, good evening. My name is Richard Morrow, and I'm the Great Air uh, New York Red Cross Community Relations Ambassador for Community Board Two. Presently, there are 45 disaster relief operations being conducted across the U.S., 40 of which are in the eastern portion of our country. All of the 45 are due to climate related issues. Over the last seven days, we have provided emergency assistance to 100 adults and 30 children follow, uh, uh, following 32 local disasters in our area. It is important to be prepared for disasters. The Red Cross through our virtual programs can help you and our community. Our courses are free. Please check out our website at redcross.org for details. Global warming is a serious issue. I have attached, or I will try to if I can, um, in the chat, a recent study showing the projected impact on the east coast of our country, meaning our city. Please review it. We are in a very serious and precarious situation. It is vital to be up to date on issues that will affect our community. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. Um, we have a representative from the Brooklyn Solid Waste. Oh, how do I do this now? Oh, okay. Once again, do we have a representative from Brooklyn Solid Waste? Oh, were you able to hear me? I, I think I had my speaker off. You, you were concluded with your report, correct? You heard it? Yeah, we heard it. Oh, thank you. Thank have you. a good evening. Thank you. Hi. All right. It's my last time. Do we have a representative yeah. from Brooklyn yes. Solid Waste? Yeah. Yes. Go ahead, Betty. Hi. So uh, in addition to my youth activities, I'm involved uh, with the Brooklyn Solid Waste Advisory. And I want to report tonight about the curbside brown bin uh, pickup of uh, organics. Uh, as, as many people know, uh, Composting collection was uh, halted during COVID. It's been it's coming back kind of slowly based on people signing up for the collection. So uh, CB2 had the second highest response in the city, which is good, but it uh, they haven't started. DSNY has not yet started uh, pickups in our area. It's good that we had the second highest, but it's still very low. The response of uh, people who want uh, their organics collected, it's not mandatory. Uh, and we don't know the date that it will begin. So uh, we, people can still sign up uh, by calling 311 or going on the DSNY uh, website. And if people uh, live in buildings and want outreach workers from DSNY, outreach, community outreach to speak at community meetings or to residents of a building, uh, that can be done as well. 
Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other speakers perhaps uh, I missed for community partners and city agencies? I think we got everybody. Just wanted to make sure. Do we have a representative from, I'm not sure what this is, BY Forever? Is that a? Oh, New York Forever. Hi, Lenny. Oh, how you doing? Good. The floor is Good. yours. Good. Good to see you in the epicenters, Doc. You were like right before me. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. No question. Um, yeah. So hi. So um, I'm part of um, the, the community district too. Um, I have the pleasure of working with Carol Ann and Brandon on the health and economic services um, committee. But when I'm not doing that, um, I have a nonprofit called New York Forever. And this week we launched an initiative around food insecurity. So there are 1.5 million New Yorkers who are food insecure. So we've partnered with, um, we being the organization of New York Forever, partnered with City Harvest, Showtime, Jesus and Marrow, and are stocking every single community fridge um, across um, the five boroughs. So if you're, um, we're getting to all of the fridges, but definitely if you have, um, if you have fridges in Brooklyn that you've seen that haven't been for, um, filled or you're interested, um, you can just send us a direct message through Instagram um, and our account is just New York NY forever. Um, but again, we're very excited about this effort um, and we are making our way through the boroughs to um, help with food insecurity. So, yes. So nothing to do, but just if you see a fridge that looks like it hasn't been stocked, hit us up and we'll, we'll make sure to get around. I have a question. Are there any community fridges in CB2? Yes. There are quite a few. Yes. There's, there's a number of them. So um, there's one, for example, on there on Myrtle. There's actually I can um, I can share it out um, through. Yes, but there there's there's quite a few, and it's actually. Um, it's not incredibly expensive to fill them. So over the summer through another organization I have, we basically um, funded $5,000 and that basically took care of three community fridges getting stocked three times a day for a month. Um, but literally the, the need is so great that typically when they're filled up, the food typically goes fast, but we've tried to partner with organizations where it's um, actually fresh vegetables and, you know, like really healthy um, produce. But yeah, so there's a map that was dropped into the chat, but there, yeah, there's community fridges um, all over. So just within, for example, Clinton Hill and Fort Greene, there are at least four, um, so. Yeah. Emily, let me invite you that when you have a chance could you work with the board office? I, I, I think your program is amazing. I think there's a lot more that you can share that in this a lot of time you really can't get deep in. I'd love for you to be able to present to the Health Environment and Social Service Committee. And then that way you can have a, a more extensive way to explain all of the wonderful things that you're doing and the committee and the, the organizations that you represent. So you can work with Carol Ann and Taya. We'll make sure we'll get you on the committee Mr. Smith, I hope you don't mind. And then I think that gives you a chance to give a, give a greater platform for the work that you're doing. So I'm inspired you. by Brandon. I am because Brandon has been such a great inspiration to all of us. So it would be <laughs> Thank you for the time. No question. Um, Tay, am I, do I have everybody? I feel like now that I got New York forever, I'm, I'm good. Is there anything else I'm missing? Okay, great. So now let's move on to um, item number 10. Other board business, um, are there any board members who have any other business that they wanna bring up for the evening? So let me start with John Du. Absolutely. Um, first, Chair Singletary, uh, that wonderful event we had on J Street honoring uh, uh, DA Thompson. Unfortunately, the transit authority was not notified that the terminus which is at that same location where we had the ceremony was not accessible by the B-54 bus. Mm -hmm. So uh, unfortunately the bus drivers did not know what to do once they got to that intersection. And they all turned to go down Fulton Street, but that also meant that anyone waiting for the bus between the plaza and my bus driver decided to turn at Vanderbilt Avenue they got no service for that period of time. And there was no notification at the bus stops that there would be no B-54 bus service. Um, 
the other item I wanted to just highlight because it came up with the presentation you got from the Red Cross is that um, we're in a particularly precarious moment in time. The issues surrounding global warming and climate change were majorly highlighted by Brandon Smith in his Hess committee meeting with the presentations from our two major utilities, both Con Ed and Brooklyn Union Gas. The work that needs to be done in our community is phenomenal as it relates to preparation for what they're saying is going to be a continuing visit on our community and on the country, uh, uh, the issues related to climate change, the water penetration issues, all of that stuff is actually going to affect how we live as a community that we don't quite embrace because it is so much. I would only ask initially that we meet, that we look at the, the presentation that Brandon's committee had from those major utilities to get a brief understanding of the impact of this global warming and what we are going to have to do in our community to prepare for it. Thank you. Thank you, John. Um, any other board? Uh, Betty, could you go on mute, please? Any other uh, board members who have items for open business? I mean, for other business? Carlton Gordon here, Lenny. Uh, just sure. wanted to, to, yeah, just to quickly thank uh, our occasional secretary, Karen Johnson, on behalf of the Landmark Land Use Committee, and also thank uh, our co-chairs, Dr. Kostarfin and Irene Jenner, for the support and the work that they've been doing. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, any other board member who has any items for other business? Okay, great. Let me jump now to um, agenda item number 11, community forum. I remind that this is the portion where members from the community who are not board members who sat through all this time and listened to us, we have the opportunity to listen to them. But I remind the community as we get to this section to be fair to everyone, we ask that you keep your comments to two minutes. And so we will call upon you and hopefully that you have uh, information that is relevant and pertinent but before I jump to the community members, I want to jump back to, I want to introduce a friend uh, to community board. Some of you may know him, others may not. Some of us served with him when he was a community member. And I think this is an example of when you serve on the community board, you get engaged, you never know what your future may be. So at this time, I want to introduce um, the Democratic nominee to be the representative for the 33rd Council Member District, Mr. Lincoln Ressler. Thank you so much, Lenny. Uh, thank you. It is great to be back with CB2. I will say that my years serving on this community board were one of the most uh, enriching, meaningful, um, like just dynamic learning experiences that I've ever had. And uh, it was, I loved it. And I'm excited to be working uh, with community board two again. Um, I am uh, the only name on the ballot uh, in, in November. So I think, you know, unless some writing campaign comes along, unfortunately, y'all might be stuck with me. Um, but I couldn't be uh, more excited to get to work. I have been doing my darndest to just run around our district and meet with every community based organization and economic development group and parks group and school. Um, and uh, we've been setting up council member. Uh, incoming council member on your corner events where we go around to each different neighborhood and, and give opportunities for folks to come by and say hello and, and share ideas for how we can make our neighborhood better and have been distributing a survey. We've got nearly 500 responses so far where we're asking people what are their priorities for how we can improve our district together. Um, and so please, if, if you need any information on any of those, shoot me a message in the chat. Um, really uh, deeply excited to work with you all. Um, I will just highlight two things that were mentioned earlier. Uh, Kat and Betty mentioned the Dumbo Library opening yesterday, but it's been 38 years since we've had a new branch in Brooklyn before I was even born. And you know, libraries are one of the few special places that bring together the diversity of our communities. And um, 
to have a new branch in Dumbo that will hopefully bring the Farragut community and the Dumbo community and everyone together and be a place for learning and engagement and organizing is just an extraordinary um, new development, a new community institution that I'm so appreciative of. And Kat's been working with us for years and we're lucky to have her at the helm of the branch. And as Betty mentioned, uh, Community Board 2 was number two on the list for organics. Department of Sanitation is on the precipice of making a decision of where they're gonna uh, uh, select as the next neighborhoods to have curbside organic pickup. If you have not completed um, the sign up form that you're gonna participate in organics, do it tonight. This is when it really matters because they're making their decision any day now. And we wanna make sure the Community Board 2 has organics pickup this calendar year that we don't wait a, a day, a second longer. Because as John Dew said, uh, the climate crisis is upon us and organics is part of the solution. So we gotta do our part um, and we gotta sign up today. So I am uh, thrilled to be um, uh, back attending Community Board 2 meetings. Um, look forward to working with you all. I'll make sure my contact information's in the chat. And if I can ever be helpful to any of you, please let me know. And Lenny Singletary, thank you for everything and for your leadership. Really appreciate you. No and problem. thank you all for your volunteerism and, and your work for the community. You guys are, do a great job. No problem, Lincoln. Thank you for that. We appreciate the comments. Um, next person up to speak is Mr. Wall Rothbart. Oh, great. Thank you. Uh, thank you for letting me speak. Thank you for all of your hard work here. Uh, Lincoln, it's great to see you here. Um, I uh, just want to say uh, 227 Duffield has been in a horrible state and um, we've been in touch with the city. It looks like they will be moving forward to remediate it. It's uh, so bad. It looks like it's you know, look, it looks like it might fall down. But I, the activists have been in touch with the city and I'm confident that they're going to do a good job and preserve any uh, uh, features that might be in there. Uh, another bit of good news, the, um, our idea to really celebrate downtown Brooklyn as the center of uh, civil rights history in the, in the United States in the 19th century is moving forward. Our petition passed 4,000 signatures. And I just always want to emphasize that the current plan for uh, Abolitionist Place Park, also known as Abolitionist Place, has a dog run on top of the tunnels that possibly carried uh, people to, to freedom, there used to be tunnels under 223, 225, and 227 Duffield um, that are, according to the city, are connected, uh, uh, were landmarked uh, as part of, possibly part of the Underground Railroad. The current plan is to put a dog run, meaning that dog urine and dog feces, I'm safe, sorry to use such horrible language, would go exactly on the spot of where these tunnels used to be, and they would be exactly next to 227 Duffield, and I really hope there's a way to build a dog run that has a different location, that doesn't, that doesn't demean that history. So that's all I want to say. Uh, thanks again for all of your work. Um, that's it. Good night. Thank you. Um... Say, do we have any other speakers? I don't see anyone else. Okay. Um, next on the agenda is item number 12. Motion to adjourn. So moved. <laughs> any discussion on the motion? Good night, everyone. Good night. Thank you. Everybody, thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night.